time to go sleep out. I'm excited to show you my process just before bed. Hey Nick, I'm just gonna use this time around just doing a perimeter check to see if there are no cats here. It makes more sense to sleep closer to the cats because it's easy for you to keep up with them in the morning. In doing so, you have more time to rest in the evening instead of doing long commutes to get to where you need to get to. We got this super amazing thermal technology that helps us see a lot more detail at night when we're following elusive cats. They can elude you when using light. So with this, you're able to be sure that the location you're choosing is safe, proper, proper safe. When you're sleeping out, you're always in this constant state of awareness. And when you do hear something, you lift up your head just to get a proper direction of where it's coming from, make a mental note of it and go back to sleep. Then in the morning, if nothing else has happened, you would use that as your first point of reference. He, the Okavango being a desert, the nights are extremely cold. I have a bedroll, it's a canvas cover with a mattress and a, a couple of blankets in it to keep me warm. Most of the animal encounters I have at night I probably don't even see because I'll be asleep. I've had lions walk past my car, but rarely have they ever come to the car. They really don't bother us in the cars. It's that safe that we can easily just sleep out in a car like this. It doesn't have any doors or windows. It's a different feeling when you know you're sleeping under the stars. It just before you close your eyes, you look up and there's a whole blanket. A whole 360 blanket just covering the sky and it's so breathtaking. You get to see shooting stars some days and you really get to marvel at the canvas that's in front of you. It's one of the best ceilings and you could sleep under. Sometimes I'm in awe before I sleep. Yeah, so this is my all-in-one filming vehicle. Welcome to my workplace, living place, my little home in the bush. I've got very good four-wheel drive. It's really strong and sturdy. Uh, I can go through water. I can go through the most incredible landscapes. And uh, everything I need is perfectly arranged. I, I could not have asked for a better little setup. So I've got my camera in the box just put next to my seat. I can lift it up, my radio to keep in touch with the gang so I can speak to anyone. Uh, so this is more my office space at the front and then in the back here we've got more of my living space. This is my kitchen, my little gas stove, cook all my meals out in the field, lunch, dinner. My fridge is uh, full of goodness. I like a good amount of veggies to be honest. So I've got a little salad, some chicken stew, I got beef stew, roasted veggies. Gotta have some ginger with my tea in the afternoon. Perfect. I'm a serious sweet tooth, but my cranberries are precious and they go in my oats in the morning. I'll, I'll say that's my luxury item. I've been out, I think the longest I've been out without going back to camp here in this area is about 10 days. Um, and the only limiting factor was drinking water. I, I can keep more than enough food for, for a long time. Excuse me. What's all that chatterbox about? The birds are getting excited about my car as well. If we go up top, we get to see my bedroom, which is arguably the best bedroom in the world. This is where I uh, sleep on the roof, my bedroll. You zip yourself up and it's like being in a little cocoon. And well, the most useful part about sleeping out is it gives us a head start in the morning. We can be in the right area at the right time, ready for the action, ready for the golden light. You know, as the best time for us to film big cats is generally dusk and dawn. We can listen at night. You know, so many of the clues we get about where the cats are come from calling and alarm calling at night. So we listen from the top, um, which is perfect. I mean, I could not ask for a better setup for filming in this landscape. It has arrived. That is, that is so weird. Just look, there's a, a little kind of river, river coming into this pond. This is the front edge of the flood.
There's this very slow moving, beautiful tsunami coming straight towards me and coming straight towards everything that lives here. Water is what makes the, the Okavango. The arrival of this water is what creates this ecosystem. The presence of this water allows these big cats to, to thrive in this area. This area can maintain a good level of prey all year round, and that's why it's a lion paradise. It all ties back to the water. And you realise what this means to this whole ecosystem. You know, I'm seeing species that, that I haven't seen up until now, and they're brought here by the water, they're following this water. It's just become this oasis. It's remarkable. So this is a tide of, of water and of birds, and any of the sort of life, whether it's insects or rodents or reptiles that are being flushed out by the water, all of these birds are are here to capitalise on that. And over the next few weeks, this landscape will be totally transformed. Five minutes ago, this was just sand and dry grass, and now I'm sort of five, six inches underwater. Um, I'm, I'm not dressed for this. I haven't brought my trunks or my wellies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving this.